Hello, everyone. My name is Ramia Costa. I am the head of investor relations of Jusberg SE, and today I want to present to you our results for the third quarter of 2024. During the third quarter of this year, the seasonality of the business also following the cyclical market decline strengthened compared to what we had seen in the first half of the year, especially in North America and in Europe. We saw demand for trucks and trailers going down significantly compared to last year. In this market environment, just actually followed the market as given our high market share. So our development of sales in North America was 30% below prior year. In Europe, our sales went down by 9.2% compared to prior year. Here, we did have support from an M&A effect of 30 million. So organically, actually sales also declined by 17%. And in Asia Pacific, Africa, too, we saw a weakness in demand given that in India, after the elections in the second quarter of this year, the markets have not quite yet recovered, although that's expected to happen over the next couple of months. Also, China continues to remain rather weak. Despite this overall m- weak market environment and the cyclical downturn that we're seeing both in transportation as well as in agriculture, we managed to perform quite well on an operating side of the business, given the high resilience and the flexibility. Here you see, especially in North America and in Asia Pacific, Africa, that we were able to improve our profitability compared to last year. Adjusted EBIT margin in North America went up by three percentage points to 13% compared to prior year. Adjusted EBIT declining much less stronger than sales. And in Asia Pacific Africa, we even managed, given the very good regional mix with very strong mining, sales, and the very strong Australia business as, as well as business in Indonesia, to increase adjusted EBIT despite the sales decline. Two factors that also supported the development in this region was that we continued to, we did a consolidation of production plants in North America as well as in China. So that to help with profitability in the quarter. Europe, however, was more affected. This uh, is mostly due to the fact that at just we allocate out of our headquarter costs to European regions of Europe uh, beers the burden of a much higher fixed cost than the other regions do. However, compared to the prior quarter, or to the second quarter of 2024, where where we already experienced a decline in demand in trucks and trailers in Europe, margins stabilized in the second quarter. Our adjusted EBIT margin was 5%. In the third quarter, we managed to stabilize it to 5.1%. And we have introduced a number of measures like short-term work, as well as other measures to increase efficiency that will help going forward as well. And we continue to look how we can increase profitability in Europe as well. So for the overall group, what this means was that sales went down in the third quarter by 15.7% from reported basis. Given the M&A effect, organic sales uh, went down by roughly 20% compared to the prior year. We saw a decrease in transportation of 23% compared to the third quarter of last year. And in agriculture, we actually saw an increase by 19%. This, however, is due to the fact that we had this M&A effect for the agricultural sales. If we adjust for that, decline in agriculture was less strong than in transport by only 5%, but it did decline. For the adjusted every on the group, profitability-wise, we reached an adjusted EBIT of 27% compared to prior year EBIT developing following sales, and the margin was with 10.8% actually on the historical upper half corridor of just It's a very good result given the current market environment that we are seeing and highlights the resilience of the business and the improvements that we've done through the different efficiency measures that we've introduced over the past quarters. So Despite this weakness in the market environment that we're seeing, we are quite pleased with the development of JOS itself in the market and with the steps that we've taken 
to fulfill our midterm growth targets going forward. So we want to achieve a sales of more than $2 billion for the group until 2030, as well as an adjusted EPS of €10 Euros per share. And this will be a big part of this development will be through acquisitions. One big step was taken in the third quarter when we signed the acquisition of Hiva, global market leader for tipping cylinder solutions, which increases our exposure to the off-highway markets and will also contribute very strongly to just position as a supplier to the global OEMs, both in the commercial vehicle industry, transportation, as well as in agriculture, but also very strong in mining and construction as well. We achieve on an operating level a very good working capital development and managed to develop a very good free cash flow of more than 20 million, actually the same level as last year, despite the decline in sales that you saw. And a year today, our free cash flow is beyond 80 million, which has allowed us actually to maintain the leverage at one point in time, despite a lot of investments also in different companies that we've done this year. And despite the decline that we saw in the markets and, of course, less adjusted EBIT that we generated last year. So very, very strong development from an operational point of view. As I mentioned before, uh, we've done a lot of homework regarding their plant consolidations to support efficiency going forward. The shareholder value was very strong with 19% rosier shift in the quarter. We had a cash conversion rate of 1.4 times as a free cash flow to adjusted net income. And EPS was at four euros, four cents in the first nine months of the year. So we're using this market environment to position ourselves uh, so that when the markets turn again, given the cycle turning back up next year, we can hit the road running with the integration of Hiva, with the closing and doing all the homeworks in order to continue to have a very strong profitability and achieve our targets midterm. Regarding outlook, we have confirmed our outlook for this year, 15% decline of sales compared to prior year, adjusted EBIT development will trail sales and we still expect to achieve an adjusted EBIT margin between 105 and 11%. CAPEX in line with expectations and also working capital below the 19% threshold. So overall, um, despite the weakness in the market, a very important quarter for just strategically and also from an operational point of view. And if you want to learn more about, about it, you can always check the webpage, Investor Relations, or contact me directly. Thank you very much for your attention. Disclaimer. As described in the legal section on our website, seat11a.com, this publication is for informational purposes only. This means it is not intended to provide you with any investment advice. Any opinion or recommendation expressed by the companies is neither given nor supported by us and should not be considered investment advice from our side. Also, remember that any opinion or recommendation expressed is subject to change without further notice. The content is obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, completeness, or timeliness. Seed11a.com and its employees disclaim all liability for any loss that may arise in any form from any use of the information in the video, audio, and on our website. We neither express any opinion on the future value of any security or other investment vehicle, nor recommend any investment based on the information provided. Please consider the publications and our website as a platform for companies to present themselves. You need to seek financial advice from an expert regarding the accuracy and appropriateness of the material presented or recommended by the companies in the publication. As we are just considered a publisher, we may hold and trade securities in the presenting company, whether it is a listed or private company. By consuming our content, you agree to these terms and the terms in our legal section.